Welcome back. I'm standing in front of the figure of the spiraling squares where I've drawn the uh, golden spiral. You see this golden spiral seems to spiral into a point. That point is the accumulation point of all of the uh, spiraling squares. How can we determine uh, the location of that point? Well, you can look at this figure. In this figure is drawn two diagonals, a diagonal of the large golden rectangle and an opposite diagonal of the second largest golden rectangle. And they seem to intersect directly at the accumulation point of all these uh, spiraling squares, which would then be the center point of the golden spiral. How can you prove that? Well, you look at this middle uh, square, a uh, rectangle here. This is uh, also a golden rectangle. And in fact, it's an exact copy of the outer golden rectangle, just reduced in size. So if you can show that this diagonal crosses uh, the corners of this rectangle, these two corners, and this blue diagonal line crosses the two corners of this slightly smaller rectangle here, then those diagonal lines have to go all the way down into the accumulation point of our spiraling squares. And their intersection point then is the center of our golden spiral. I leave that to you as an exercise. If you also look at this figure, you see that the center is in the right-hand side of the figure and in the bottom half of the figure. Because this is a rectangle and the, the center of the spiral is not in the middle of the rectangle, then there there's, must be other ways of drawing this figure so that the center can be up here, say, or it can be over here, or it can be down here. Right? So let's look at the four possible ways we can draw this figure. Here they are. The two figures on the left are, are drawn such that the first square is on the right side of the figure. And the difference here is that the second square here is drawn on the bottom, while on the lower figure the second square is drawn on the top and we still spiral the squares. So the spiral here goes clockwise, and the spiral on the lower curve goes counterclockwise. So those are two possibilities. The other possibility is that the first square can be on the left of the figure. Here they're on the, the left side. And then we can have the second square on the bottom or the top. And then as we spiral, the top one here will be counterclockwise. The bottom one here will be clockwise. So we have four possible uh, centers, four possible starting points for these uh, golden spirals, four possible accumulation points of the spiraling squares. So we can mark them. Here's how we mark them. We draw all these diagonals. So the intersection between the red diagonal and the blue diagonal will mark the center of the, the starting point of the golden spirals. So we have one, two, three, four of them. Because of the symmetry of the rectangle, we can connect these four and get a, another rectangle. So if we connect those four to get another rectangle, here we go. It's rather amazing, I think we actually get another golden rectangle. So the golden rectangle that we get comes from the corners being at the center of the four possible spirals. And that golden rectangle is just as dimension that is reduced by a square root of five. So the length of the rectangle is a square root of five uh, shorter than the length of the initial golden rectangle that we start with. 
I think this is uh, really cool, and I leave it to you to show that this is in fact true. I'll see you next time.